All right, so welcome everybody today to our presentation. Um, we have a wonderful guest speaker. I'd like to be able to call her not only a client, but a friend of mine, Dawn Nikita. Dawn, would you like to say hi? Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Dawn works at Soft Choice as a senior talent acquisition specialist. She's got in-depth experience in recruiting, in supporting talent, in disability. She posts her jobs on our system, Discoverability. So today we're going to, you know, hear from her on how to create a professional brand, which I think is really, really important as we, um, you know, especially online, as we are in the midst of COVID and as we all try to get jobs or as we move forward in our trying to find a better job. So welcome, Dawn. We're delighted to have you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to you now. Awesome. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. And I'm going to make today hopefully um, as enjoyable for you as it was for me creating this deck. And I'm a huge um, believer in our personal and professional brand. And today you can expect to definitely dive into those areas. And um, I highly encourage use the chat. If you have questions, ask away. We can take breaks during the presentation because we do have an hour allocated. But I don't mind if we um, we take breaks throughout and if anyone needs water, let me know. We can definitely take a moment to do so. So yes, uh, thank you, Lisa. I work for Soft Choice. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Soft Choice, we are a cloud technology organization that specializes in digitalization with cloud products. So we partner with organizations similar to Amazon or with Amazon, Microsoft, Cisco, VMware, to name a few, to drive digitalization with cloud-based technology and innovation to our customers. My role, simply put, is I support the growth through our organization. So I've been blessed um, over the course of the last year to meet some wonderful people, not only within Soft Choice, but through the talent community of my journey here at Soft Choice. And I also sit on our accessibility ERG, um, so I have a lot of um, opportunity to learn, um, not only professionally, but also network with those within the accessible and disability community. So when Lisa and I were chatting about this event, I was like, yeah, I'm totally on board. Um, something I'm absolutely passionate about, um, not to share too personally, but I do have um, a physical as well as an invisible disability. So for me, this is close to my heart and I'm here um, as someone who's excited to, to be able to share some knowledge. So as we kick off, yes, um, as noted, we will discuss your professional brand and essentially we're gonna spend most of the time talking about building your resume um, and what that means for you as an individual. Um, so I already gave you my introduction. There's my photo pre blonde hair dye. Um, <laughs> so if you see me on LinkedIn, yes, this is the same person. I, during COVID at some point woke up and was like, I need a change. I need a change. So here we are. So nice to meet you. And yes, please note, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Uh, the name is Dawn Nikita. All right, so agenda for today. So we're gonna talk about knowing your audience. Um, so when you talk, when we say knowing your audience, that essentially means who's reading your resume and how to market yourself towards your audience. How to purposefully stand out. Now, it's hard, this is gonna be tricky, but we'll hopefully be able to get into some of those details for you. And then content, what content should, shouldn't be, what's relevant, what's not necessarily relevant. We'll dive into that as well. And then formatting. Formatting for me um, is a big thing, right? I look at hundreds of resumes a week and um, we'll get into that, but there will be some coverage on formatting. And then job search and application tips. So that is essentially the agenda. If I were to expand on that as well, there is a section near the end where we will cover LinkedIn as well as some digital interviewing and remote interviewing tips as well. All right, so resume basics. I decided for the purpose of today's presentation to keep it as simple as possible. And you can take what you need from this exercise or workshop, whatever you wanna call it. So essentially the purpose, um, and let's not forget, it can be so simple, like I said. So the purpose is it's an introduction to you as a person, an individual, um, and you wanna be able to showcase your authentic self as much as possible through paper and through your online social channels. And then you're gonna use your resume to obviously outline your experience, whether it's academic or professional, okay? 
And then qualifications. So this is a big one um, and we'll talk about that, but you definitely want to showcase your qualifications as well as your successes. It's one thing to say, and oftentimes this is actually something we see is this, these are my qualifications, but people don't take the time to showcase their successes, their success stories, right? And those are the most powerful tools that you have as a professional. So how do you showcase those? And then the, the winning part is how to get you an interview, right? So this is the purpose of your resume. It's all of these things just checked. I know it sounds really simple. We'll break into those um, categories in a few moments. All right, so ways you will leverage your resume. So pretty basic stuff again, but we're gonna cover it. It's to network, right? You're networking professionally, that's the biggest thing. And then obviously to apply to resumes and for your interview. So those are the three ways that you will, um, in the future, if not now, use your resume. Now this one, this section is, was a lot of fun <laughs> to create. And I actually, myself included, learned a lot building out this section. So hoping that um, whoever's on the call today will see some value from this section as well. So types of resumes. By the way, the airplanes were just wonderful. I thought they were really cute. Okay. So the chronological resume. So this is also known as your traditional resume, right? This resume focuses on work experience, listing your, your, current, your current job um, chronologically to your first job, as well as it highlights um, steady employment and progression in your job responsibilities. So this is a standard resume. So if you are like, hey, I want something super simple, super basic, write down the chronological resume, Google it, search it, there's so many templates online that you can leverage, um, but this is a very simple approach that is clean and easy to use and follow as a reader, as well as someone who's writing their resume. And then this is what we have and call the functional resume. So the functional resume um, concentrates on general and specialized skills, okay? So the difference is this resume is gonna focus on your ability um, rather than lengthy descriptions that someone might have put in the functional, right? So when you go back to your functional, you, you would see the title and then a description of who you are, what you've done within that role. The functional resume, as you can see on the, it's my left-hand side, I'm not sure how it's showing for you, but under soft skills, and if you can't see this, we'll definitely send out a presentation as well um, to follow uh, that will have alt cap text, text options for you as well. So just note that. Um, but under the soft skills section, we can see that there's a communication option. There's an organization problem solving. They've broken down some soft skills, right? So they've measured themselves in these key areas. So this resume also is really good at hiding gaps. So for example, I don't know, you worked for a couple of years, went back to school, maybe just to get a certificate or you had a baby or you just needed some time off for whatever reason. The functional resume is actually a really great option for someone who is looking to potentially hide a gap somewhere um, because oftentimes there are biases, right? Like we cannot discount that. Um, sometimes hiring managers have unconscious bias when it comes to gaps in resumes. So if you are, if you're thinking of how can I get creative on hiding some of those gaps, not that you're really hiding it, you will talk about it openly, but so that when the person first reads it, that's not the first thing that they're calling out, right? So this is a great option for you um, if you're looking at an option to be able to disguise some of that, but it's also, it's also a little bit more graphical, right? So your functional has the icons, um, so you see the phone, you also can see the email, the LinkedIn, et cetera. So again, very easy to read um, and, a, and a great option as well. And even for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience, this is also a great option for you because you can use some of the page um, for some of the, the soft skills and the education like they, like they noted on this, this profile here. Okay, and then we have the combination style of resume. So, this resume brings essentially both the chronicle and the functional resumes together. So going back to our traditional as well as our functional, and they've literally titled it the combination style. So you'll see a little bit of both. You see the experience section really defined, outlined, highlighted. Um, you can also see there's a skill section, right? So the skill section um, is important as well if you don't necessarily want to be able to highlight that through 
your experience section. And then you still have your contact information um, as well as some skills broken down in bullet point format to be able to showcase, hey, you know what? These are some of the skills I have that, that I can bring to your role. And I guess the key thing for me when I'm looking at profiles or resumes is, did they take time to, to go through the job description? Did they take time to align their profile? And you can always tell when someone does take that extra five, 10 minutes and really truly identify their alignment to the job description or profile that's posted. So this is the skill section is actually a really great area to add keywords because we'll talk about this in a moment, but when you get to the application tracking system, keywords are a function, right? That the system uses to generate talent um, while we're searching in our recruiter chairs. So there you have it. Sorry, I am eight months pregnant and breathing heavily only because I have this belly and this baby in me right now. Um, so the combination style, okay? So that is a great option if you're looking for a little bit of both. And then leveraging Microsoft Word. So funnily enough, I know this sounds simple. You may or may not have known this, but Microsoft Word has a lot of really fun templates and I call them modern day resumes because more and more I'm seeing people come with photos, images, um, color, you know, the black and white resume days, they still exist, but they're few and farther between now, right? So if you're, if you're looking for more of a creative role or you're looking to get in the technology or innovative space, feel free, be creative, have fun, okay? Now, if you're someone who's potentially in more of a, you know, serious type role that you're looking to keep something very simple and clean and easy to read, th there's no reason why the black and white um, resume won't work for you. But there is, um, there are more and more talent that I'm seeing that present themselves in this fashion. And I think there's an element of an emotional connection that you get, right? When, when you get to see someone's creativity come through. And as a reader, for me, emotional connection is big. It's, it's an indicator of like, okay, wow, I really, I like the time they've put into this profile. Um, I have a better understanding of who they are as, as a person, right? And I think that's also, if you're looking to find a way to stand out, um, this is also a great option for you to consider as well. At uh, Lisa, do we have any questions so far? So we do not. I've been answering some of them in the chat okay. um, as your backup, Dawn. Thank but you. Thank you. No problem. This is a beautiful example. A couple things to note if um, you know I can add to it. So all your resumes will have your contact information. Um, and you know, so we use chronological when we've had a consistent history and we want to move backwards in time showing that. And I loved your description that functionals are for when there's the gap. If we're using the colors and we're using these templates, we might want to make sure that the ATS system can read it. Do you want to mention what that is, Dawn, and just maybe cover that? Yes, and we will cover that. So ah, right. stay tuned, okay. stay tuned. Um, but you are right. So it's it's not it's not that colors won't necessarily show up because if you save a PDF it uploads as a PDF, for example, right? But when you put content in your header, in your footer, sometimes that content can get lost. So my rule of thumb is try to avoid the header and footer um, and just leverage the actual body for content as well, okay? Awesome, thank you, Lisa. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the digital resume. And this is, I call this for the modern day technology lover because the modern resume, I don't see very often, but I think there is gonna be an evolution. And when you think of the world we're living in and the digitalization of you know, modern workplaces and all the, the softwares companies are using to showcase, more and more I start hearing words and buzz, buzzwords around video resumes video resume really like is that a thing so I added it if you like it if you are up for the challenge um this is something that <laughs> that is definitely probably then up your alley to try so and this might be great for someone who's looking to get into content related roles or if there's like animation anything like that that's really super creative so the digital resume really just means your resume is also available online so when you think of um 
you know, a website, for example, like on certain chronological or functional resumes, you can also have a website option. And your website option could also include a digital, a digital resume. Um, and oftentimes if they're creatives or they have a portfolio, there's also a link to their portfolio, et cetera. But a digital resume is a great place to showcase not only a portfolio, um, but also some of your digital talent. So we'll just spend a few moments on this, but- And Dawn, we have, sorry, we have a question. What are your thoughts sure. on a vlog or a website in addition to LinkedIn? Ooh, you know what? Like I said, I've seen it. I definitely always check it out. So if you put it on your resume, just be prepared to make sure it works <laughs> because yes. oftentimes um, I'll see links to things that I'm not necessarily able to access. So. It's not, it's not a showstopper or a deal breaker. I think um, these are great ways to be creative. And, and if you are looking to stay in that space to showcase that, do it. Just make sure the links work. Um, websites are great. GitHub, all those functions are great, like I said. Um, and the next slide, actually. So this, these are three examples of what a digital like professional site could look like. So again, um, you would probably have your standard resume or cover letter with a link to your prof prof professional site, right? So the first one you can see, it's this gentleman um, has his dog. He's showcasing some of his like his personal side, right? Which is unique. And that's the advantage when you can do something like this as well is you can be vulnerable to a little bit more of a personal connection to your audience. And then the second one here is just a, just a headshot um, with some contact information, right? And, and maybe there's a couple of tabs you want to add for what you've done, whether it's your cover letter, some projects, et cetera. So those are some options. Um, but on top of that, yes, whoever asked that question is right. Your digital resume does also include your LinkedIn portfolio or your profile, I should say. And then there's the option of video and your professional website. So those are typically the three digital resumes that we see today. Um, so depending on your level of creativity, <laughs> time and investment, those are three areas that you can definitely focus on trying to find ways to be creative and to stand out, okay? So for those that um, are getting a little excited over the professional website, I actually did some research and there's a couple here that I wanna know. So, Feel free, we will send this deck out later, but um, Wix was the most popular digital website that I was able to come across. There is also Squarespace, Weebly, Duda, which I don't think anyone can forget that Duda, um, and Site123. So these sites build, will help you build those resumes and some of them are free. So um, just note that when I was checking them out, I was like, oh, this is really neat. Like it really is no actually, cost this. I think Elizabeth Moeller, who's on the line, Liz, you have you you have a website. Which one do you use? Do you have any comments? Uh, sure. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, I use um, I use WordPress, and I just popped it there in the chat. I found uh, someone that utilizes assistive technology. It was the most accessible. Mm -hmm. What I like is it allows you to to build your website or resume or blog right from your mobile device. So uh, you can update your blog on the fly or your, your resume. Um, now, WordPress websites do cost money. They're not free. Um, so that's just something to note when you're thinking about building your site. And what would be the approximate cost? Sorry to put you on the spot, Elizabeth. That's okay. Yeah, so for uh, for, for me, for a two-year domain, I paid $139. Okay. So that's pretty reasonable. Thanks. Yeah. Back but that didn't include any of like the getting the photos and someone to do the developing of the site that was separate. And our screens appearing a little bit off screen, uh, Dawn, if we Yeah, can I'm it. trying to figure out what just happened here. So bear with me. Sure. So there's lots of, um, I found, I've used um, my LinkedIn really heavily connecting to things and, and, and other examples of your work or PowerPoints. And I do think it gives people a really good idea of what you're creating, what you're able to do. Um, you know, keep all those things, create your own YouTube channel for, you know, whatever you need to do. So those are all really, really good options. So I, I'm, I'm glad you brought those up, uh, Donna. 
Yeah. And again, just if, if you're really looking for that type of creativity, there's definitely um, options to do that. So Lisa, just to make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing, are you seeing examples of a digital resume web builder website? I am, John. Okay, perfect. So we're moving on to knowing your audience. So we touched this um, briefly at the beginning. And sorry, thank you so much for whoever shared that. That's very helpful. Um, and yes, the cost of $139 for two years, like that's not, that's not awful, right? There are some that are monthly. Um, so at least if you can eliminate the monthly cost, that's great. Um, so knowing your audience. So this is interesting, right? Because I want you to think um, like a buyer for a second, right? You are, um, you're walking into a store and there are tons of products to choose from, for example. And um you know, as a, as a buyer, you're like, what product will stand out to me? Well, today I was going to look for some lipstick, but I see this branded product for slippers. They look great. I'm going to check them out. Right. So when we're applying to jobs, I want you to shift your mindset just a little bit, because not only are you showcasing yourself, we also have to remember who is our audience. Our audience is in this case, it's going to be potentially talent acquisition, the hiring manager, if you're lucky, right? If we can get you to that stage, that's the objective. Um, and what are they thinking and what are they looking for? So this section, we're gonna cover a little bit about that. Um, but, but before we do that, um, just remember that you have one chance, right? We have one opportunity with this particular client or that particular position to give you that opportunity to stand out like those slippers potentially would. So you are one in many profiles and this is true. I mean, COVID, um, we've seen a surge in applications. Like I have one role open right now for a business analyst and I, I had to take down the posting. We were at over 900 applicants. I couldn't even keep up to the applicant pool. So we have one opportunity and that's not normal. I'd say on average it's probably two to 300 for, for a more generalized type of position, but you want to make sure that you put yourself in your best, um, your best impression forward. So again, um, one chance to showcase yourself and just remember, they probably will cross-reference you, right? Whether and, that's. And, and Dawn, I just want to go back to that point because I think it's so important. So 900 is huge, right? But mm -hmm. so is 200. You have to beat out 200 other people on average. And that's, mm -hmm. and I know for some really popular jobs, it can be even higher. Mm -hmm. Like some government jobs, they're getting like a thousand applications in general. So, you know, these tips you're giving us are absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as like, and I, I think back to when I was searching, if I would have, and I never got calls back and I couldn't understand why I was like, I think I have a pretty good resume. My profile looks pretty good. And I wasn't getting any calls back. Um, so our networks are very powerful and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. But um, I also want everyone to think they're going to search you probably if they've liked your prize resume, chances that they're going to Google search you, look at your Facebook, your Instagram, they might, right? So just be weary of your content that you put out there, especially during your job search, because um, some managers do check. Okay. And if you are going to put something on your resume and there's a discrepancy between LinkedIn, I know that that could potentially be an opportunity, um, for them to potentially not be as interested, okay? And then talent within budget. I know this is kind of a sensitive topic, right? It's, I, I talk to a lot of people and um, every organization, every position has a budget allocated, right? And um, this is tough because at this stage, I know a lot of people are looking for work. So um, you don't wanna sacrifice what you're looking for financially, but I also want you to know, like you can ask, and say, listen, like, I am comfortable with the market is looking for. Um, and why don't you ask them to share that back with you? But I don't think there's anything wrong with that. People do it all the time. So don't be afraid to have those conversations. And you can make the decision for yourself if the budget works within what you're looking for as well. And then understanding gaps in your career path. So we touched on that a little bit. Um, so it's not only understanding what they should look like on your resume. So go back to the functional, right? You can potentially hide that a little bit or disguise it with different things. 
but also know how, when you get that interview, what are you going to say? How do you say it? Right. Um, were you studying? Like, was it personal? Um, so just be worried that that's something that will probably come up as well. So that's what you want to think of when you are presenting your professional profile. Dawn, we have a question before we move on from that. Sure. When and how can you ask about the company's budget for the position? Yeah, ooh, this is a very sensitive topic and I sit on the other side of the fence, so I'm gonna be careful. But I will say, just ask, honestly, like just be vulnerable and say, listen, you know, I, I, I'm really interested in the position. I'm flexible on the budget to a certain degree. Um, can you share with me your range? Cause they will have a range, right? And, and you can just say, listen, like, I don't want to be disqualified for saying something that's maybe five or $10,000 off because I am flexible. Um, so I'd like to know what your range is. And I think it's, I think if you leave it like that, they're going to think, okay, this person's flexible. They're open-minded. They're open to the discussion because at the end of the day, this is your livelihood. Um, I know for me, I'm putting food on the table for my children. So the money matters, right? Like we, we can't dismiss that. And I know what my own flexibility looks like. Um, like I've taken jobs where I've made less money or I've made more, right? So I think it's, it's what is the full understanding of the opportunity? And I also think that's what you say as well is money's one factor, right? It's also the benefits. It also depends on the opportunity, the growth, potential, and vacation. Like all of those things combined group give you a full package. So I focus on the full package, not just the salary. I love that you say that, Dawn, because I'm older and right now vacation. You are not older, more. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vacation matters far more to me than the salary because I want to love what I'm doing, but I need time to go enjoy myself or take more frequent breaks. So I think being open to the whole package, adding up what the benefits might be in there. You really need to look at the, what are the opportunities for advancement or lateral movement? Or if you're young, what skills am I learning that I can bring to the next job? Because when you're young, yes, we want, you're right, the ma money matters, but we also want to start building a really broad skill set that we can build a future career on. Mm -hmm. So I love that you said that. We also had a question, Dawn, back about that gaps again and the misunderstand, you know, how to understand your gaps. Um, any other suggestions for how to phrase? So let's say I took a gap year off because of a disability. But I don't want people to know that. How might I phrase that? That's, that's tough. Um, I think phrasing it on your resume and phrasing it in an interview are two different yeah, I wouldn't let, let's, I would say as a former employment counselor, so somebody who helped people, I wouldn't mention it on my resume. I'd use the functional. Yeah. yeah. And, but once we're in the interview, would it be appropriate for me to say, I took time off for personal reasons, but I'm so excited to be back in the job market and I really want to work for Soft Trace, Dawn. Yeah. And I, and if the person on the other end is probing, um, I mean, I don't think they will, right? I think when someone says personal reasons, the tone is very clear, right? It's, they're not willing to give that information and that's okay. You're okay to not want to give that information. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well, because it is also for us, you know, um, who do have to disclose at some point, right? It's when do we disclose and when do we feel yeah. comfortable disclosing? So, I mean, that topic, Lisa and I can chat about forever um, <laughs> because I feel like there's there's no right or wrong. It's what you're comfortable with, right? And, and I guess judging when we say knowing your audience, um, let's just go back to that mindset. You can tell and you like, you know, yes. the human in you, you, you can tell the openness of that person, right? Like you talking to me right now, you can probably see you can talk to me. Like, I, I want to have this conversation with you. Um, and then you might, and you might save that conversation for the later end of your interview process or at the point that you're hired, whenever you are comfortable. But I would just leave it very vague if you're not open to sharing the details right away. And that's okay. And you, and you don't need to. I think there's also signals that companies send out, like you advertise on the Discoverability Network, which is to connect to people with disabilities. So that to me says right there that maybe soft choice is more open yeah. to hiring diverse individuals than maybe a company that doesn't. 
or if Absolutely. you have a really strong accommodation statement on you know the application. I think there's signals companies can send as well as like you said in the actual interview. Good point, Lisa. And just to touch on that, so yes, that's exactly what you should do. I think um, before any interview, as you're doing your company research, check out their diversity section because most companies do have a diversity inclusion um, section now. And ours clearly, clearly states um, accommodations during the interview process or so you just know like there probably is more of an open conversation that can be had. So just just do your homework to, to, to gauge as well the company's involvement um, with certain topics and areas because that that'll help you understand is this the right company for me as well because ultimately you still want to find a company where you can be yourself and bring your true self to work every single day as well. So so yes, I would say vague if you need to, but definitely, um, hopefully at the point that you're at offer, you're, you're noticing this is a company that acceptance and bias, um, acceptance is there and there is no bias. So here's to hoping, right? Um, okay, so resume building. Um, so my toolbox, you see my tools. We're gonna talk format for a second. So I'm big on format. Um, I'm creative, but I'm also, very direct. So for me, format matters. And if I look at your resume and I get lost, I, there's too much to read. There's ongoing sentences. There's periods here. There's not periods here. One title is bolded, the other title, like that stuff for me is a representation of you, right? So I want you to remember that. Um, think of this as an assignment that you're submitting for your final exam, right? And every for English, for English, right? And everything that you put on paper matters because it does, especially when um, you, you know, there's a couple of resumes that, that we're looking at and then you see things like, you know, different font sizes or um, different fonts. That one really, that one really, really gets me. So just be, make sure that you take just a little bit more time finalizing those fine tuned details before you click send, okay? Um, I think I covered everything on there. Yeah. And then if you want to bold, actually, I like this section. I wrote, I wrote this. So if you want to use bold um, to emphasize some of the keywords that were highlighted in the job profile or the job description, do it, right? Because then it's easy for me to catch and for me to see and view and read. So um, I'd say that's another tri a trick that you could potentially do to add some, some more visibility to the right wording. Um, so yeah, I would just say that um, related to format. And then example categories. So these are, so we talked about the types of resumes, okay? Now I'm gonna break down the categories that you can have in your resume. Cause there's so many options, um, but simple is better. We've already established, we like simple, we like easy to read um, and easy to view, right? So profile, objective, summary, I mean, you don't need all of those, pick one, right? Pick whether it's your profile, your overview or your summary, however you want to word an introduction to yourself. There should be a very small introduction to yourself um, because I think that's John, important. Yes. Can you move the cursor off the page because you're blocking some of the text? Thank you. There we go. Thank you for telling me. I see, I'm not, I, I see my screen and it's different than what you see. So feel free at any point to just, just to poke me and say, don't move your cursor. Um, okay, so education. I mean, education, you can add, not add. I mean, if it's if it's a requirement, add it. If you've just graduated, you don't have experience, add it. Um, work experience, again, work experience is probably the most critical part, but don't overdo it, right? Only focus on what you feel is mandatory, okay? Pick your key successes, right? So I drove this. I was able to um, achieve this. I impacted the organization by this, by doing this. I think just focusing on some really tangible things. And if it's two or three sentences, that's okay. I'd rather see two or three really detailed, tangible things that you have achieved versus 12 sentences of potentially things that I'm like, okay, this is great, but it's not as relevant to what we're looking for. So that's my advice there. And then your special skills. I mean, every role that I've had, I've always been able to gain other skills outside of my daily function, right? So whether that was presenting across the organization on some training, right? Or whether, and that's not what I do in my day job. My day job is 
recruiting and interviewing and um, ensuring that we're identifying the right talent. But I'm also very passionate and overexert myself in other areas to, to stay to stay, to stay focused in different, in different skills. So feel free to add those as well. And then memberships, honors, awards. Um, if you have any of those, feel free to add them. Um, and you can add a little like awards icon um, if you had under your phone or your email icons as well. And then references. So for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience, references, um, whether they were internships or from a teacher even, like those things do go a long way. So don't feel bad adding one um, or thinking- Can I make a suggestion here, Dawn? Yes, yes, please. So I usually tell people, all employers know that if they ask you for a resume or references, you have to provide them. So right. I don't use that space, that real estate on my actual resume because employers know that. So have a separate document that matches your resume but that has your references on it. The second thing is we got a question. If you're in columns, will the ATS read that? Yes, again, if you save it as a, as a PDF. PDF. That's what I thought, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and thank you, Lisa. Again, preference, right? If you have a reference from an internship that was very critical to the role you're applying to, it's not going to hurt you, right? If you don't have much experience and if you're looking for something to fill the page, but Lisa's right. It's not mandatory. If you get the job, then your reference will be included. But if you're like, Hey, I want to showcase that I have been successful in my internship or that small project that was a contract that was three or six months and you don't have much experience, you can definitely fill the space. So whatever you're comfortable with. So the short resume, um, so funny. So these are short resumes, what we call short resumes. So these are great for, um, again, students, um, folks that don't have so much experience, this is what they could look like. So these are a few examples. You see just profile, one work section, their education, some achievements and skills. So that's something. And then there's the two page resume. I often get questions of, is the two page resume a thing? Yes, it's still a thing. <laughs> Um, I mean, granted, I, I don't like or enjoy reading a four page resume. Um, so I definitely would advise to try to condense um, your resume from that four page potential. Um, but a two page is totally fine, totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it if the content is relevant, right? So go back to what I said again. So if you have 15, 20 years experience, you're probably most likely gonna have more than one page and that's okay. So just remember everything we've chatted about. It's not the space, it's the content, right? So you can take the space, just make sure the content is relevant and the content is concise um, to what it is that you're applying to. Any questions, Lisa? No, but I think that's such a great point, what you just said. Um, as a mature job seeker <laughs> myself, um, I don't actually like going back too far, Dawn, because it gives away my age. And if I'm worried about ageism, or maybe somebody on the other end thinking, wow, she's not going to be very good with tech because she was born in the 1920s, um, you know, I might actually limit what I put on there. And again, a functional could be a great way of hiding the length of my work, but I could focus on things that I've done. Yes, so yes, I love, yes. I love that you're focusing on content, not on like there's one right way to do it or one wrong way. It really is about how to best present yourself. Totally. And you're right. If you have like, for example, even myself on my resume, and I'm, I think I'm 12, 12 years now um, of professional experience. And I don't talk about what I did before I got into recruiting. I just don't. Now it's gone. It doesn't even exist. Like I was in I was in trade show sales. It's not on my resume, right? Um, so you can cut things like that. So good point, Lisa, thank you. All right, so the applicant tracking system. So um, let's just take a minute to chat about this. So I don't wanna say getting past the ATS because it's really not, right? Like the ATS, I mean, and there's different systems, sorry, it's really wonky. There's different systems. Um, that function differently. The ones that I am used to, okay, are the ones that I'll chat about today. Um, 
they there's still there's still a manual effort required. I still have to enter keyword searches. I still have to do which we call boolean search in our world um, as recruiters. And I still I still navigate through the system. The system doesn't just generate here's the job description, here's everyone that applied, call these people. I mean, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> Because then it would help me with that 900 applicant um, job profile that I have right now. So there is still a portion of um, navigation and searching for a recruiter in the systems I've used. And I've used success factors. I've used Workday. I've used Career Builder as the three main ATSs. And those are pretty big ATSs, okay? So I, would, I feel confident saying that most recruiters will still have to do a search, okay? So this is when we go back to... I'm uploading the correct profile. So yes, Word, PDF, those are the two most, um, or I guess the two that you should be using. And again, the header. So don't put information like certifications or um, I don't know, your website or whatever it is that you want in your header to be caught um, through a search. Because when I search those keywords, nothing in your header or footer will, will populate. And then again, back to the keywords, like really, really focus on the job profile and the keywords that were listed because in my chair, I'm searching probably for those keywords and good indicators for you while you're looking at a profile is, okay, how do I ask yourself, what are the functional and the tangible skills that would be really good keywords that I would probably need to have as a skill? So for example, if you're applying to a technical role and the technical roles requirements are an SAP analyst, um, someone who's potentially worked on product data, um, as well as maybe we're looking for someone that, um, I don't know, can do SQL and VBA as some other things, right? So you'll see fluff. So as much as there's potentially fluff on a resume, there's potentially fluff on the job description, right? So it's almost like you have to do a little bit of both. You have to look at the job description and identify where's the fluff and what are the words that I need to focus on or the skills that I need to focus on that I have to enter into my resume? Because chances are I'm only searching the skills. I'm not searching anything related to team player, communication, all that fluff. I call it fluff, right? Because it's just taking up space on the page. What I'm searching is SAP, VBA, data, and Excel. Those are probably the four things that have everything I just shared with you. Um, that I'm searching for. So if you're like, hey, I have 80% or 90%, you're going to focus on trying to incorporate that 80 or 90% as much as you possibly can, right? Because oftentimes there is flexibility with hiring managers. Like I know myself, um, I will call someone that's like 70, 80%. If I see that, I'll call them, I'll talk to them. Um, cause not like, not every time is there, they're going to be the perfect, perfect person, right? There's always often an opportunity for growth and learning. So I would focus on what you have tangibly add those keywords. I can go on. I'm going to stop myself. Um, but that's ultimately, um, how I would suggest positioning yourself for the ATS. So here you go. This is an example of what it looks like on my end when I enter those keywords. Okay. So I get highlighted skills. So if I put in like, again, SAP, VBA, um, et cetera, those would all be highlighted on your profile. Okay. So you can see this is a probably a Word document or a PDF that has highlighted skills. Okay. And that is literally how it looks on my end. So Dawn, we have a yeah. question here. Someone sure. has, um, I'm completing my certificate as a, U, a UX user designer soon. So with little experience, just wondering if junior would be a keyword. No, I, I typically wouldn't search junior or senior. Um, I would search the function. I would search graphical. I would search UI. I would search um, the function, not the level. Okay, great tip. Thank you, Don. Yeah. yeah. Okay, LinkedIn. So um, I can't see everyone, but if I could, I would say, how many of you have LinkedIn profiles? Then you'd raise your hand or not, but I'd, I'd assume the majority of you have LinkedIn profiles. Now, hopefully you can take something away from this section to be able to know um, how to utilize it. Now we have 10 minutes. I'm gonna try my best to just go through this. 
Um, it's not much, it's only a couple more slides. So um, just bear with me, okay? All right. So actually, sorry, John, we've had yeah. Marmik raise his hand. Did you want to ask a question, Marmik? Yes. So uh, for LinkedIn, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Don, earlier, right, uh, that whatever you mentioned on uh, your resume and then somebody checks or checks your LinkedIn. Uh, now, the resume might be concise, while the LinkedIn is more more elaborative uh, kind of uh, area where, you know, I have a lot of details uh, emphasized in it. So when you say there, is, there might be a discrepancy, uh, so what exactly you are looking uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, what, what at first glance, what ha happens when you say, you know, no, no, there's something wrong here uh, and it gives you an ind indicator. Let's okay. let her finish her presentation on LinkedIn before we ask questions. No, that's okay. That's a good question. So when we talk discrepancies, it's more your title, the dates, um, etc. I'm not going to ding someone potentially on having a longer, um, like you said, sorry, a longer section on your LinkedIn. Like that's, that's totally fine. That's, that's for you to, that's your discretion. Right. But if, for example, your title is, um, I don't know, software developer and then business analyst, to me, that's a flag, more of a flag. Right. And I would want to understand, was it a dual purpose role? And then it just creates a question right in my mind. So I wouldn't say, again, it's the length or the content. It could just potentially be um, just little things that just seem a little off, okay? So right. ways to build an impactful LinkedIn page. So um, there is a link. So when we send out the deck, there's a link that we're also going to include for you that gives you 20 tips um, that LinkedIn um, that LinkedIn has um, sent out um, to making a very a very powerful LinkedIn profile. And these were just some of the ones that I felt were you like, yes, absolutely. So your profile photo, um, I don't know whether you're comfortable or not, um, but profile photos, they're, they're a way to introduce yourself to the professional workforce, right? So definitely um, if you're up for it, include that. And then your background photo. So your background photo is interesting. So think of it as an opportunity to showcase a passion or an interest, because um, it's also a way to create that emotional connection. And I'm big on emotional connection. I've said it three or four times on this presentation. So creating that emotional connection to, to an organization or just showcasing who you are is super important. And make your headline captivating. So underneath your name, don't just put recruiter, right? Like mine, um, for example, which is here, you can see passionate about diversity, accessibility, and talent acquisition marketing. So that I'm branding myself, right? So when we talk about our professional brand, you see, okay, like an app, like with my average headshot, let's not look too long on that. But in the background, you can see I'm passionate about disability. I'm passionate about accessibility and diversity. It's like right there, front and center, right? And there's no mistaking where um, my passion lies when you look at my profile, okay? So feel free to be creative and use that as an opportunity to showcase um, some of those things in yourself if you do so feel comfortable. And um, yeah, your LinkedIn is your story, right? It's your professional digital story, as we like to call it. And it's for growing your network, um, listing those relevant skills. So what I will say on LinkedIn, so as much as we talked about searching through the ATS, recruiters search through LinkedIn, okay? So I also can type in keywords. So I'll type in business analyst, SAP, whatever it is that I'm looking for. And I'll put the geographical area. So please, areas are important too. You can put Ontario if it doesn't matter where you work. Um, but feel free to add skills on your LinkedIn because those are searchable for recruiters. So there is a skills section. So feel free, five, 10, however many you wanna add, whether it's project management, functional or technical skills, okay? And then if you complete any LinkedIn learnings or assessments, like definitely add those certificates to your LinkedIn profile. And if you're applying to jobs um, or interviewing, highlight that, follow that company, showcase your interest and your passion, you know, look at their, um, look at their marketing, that look at whatever they're putting, the content they're putting out there, like it, because that will all come in your newsfeed, right? So as a viewer, when I get onto your um, LinkedIn page, I'll be like, wow, like this person, they really do want to work here. They really took the time to understand who we are as an organization. And 
Um, I call them brownie points, <laughs> right? Because those are little things you can do just to kind of showcase your interest as well. So just some tips there. But again, we will send out that, that email from LinkedIn. And then I, I liked this, like real life photos, they're okay. Like you don't need to be, um, you know, like that perfect fancy headshot, like that's gone. We're, COVID has taught us if anything, you can put on your hoodie, you can have no makeup on and you can take that photo and it's okay, right? Like we are past the formalities of wearing a suit and tie for a photo every single day. Like I'm wearing a turtleneck sweater. Like I'm pretty casual. I'm not wearing makeup other than some lip gloss. And that's the world we live in. We've evolved, right? So don't feel like, oh, I don't really have an outfit or that's okay. Just showcase yourself and whatever that means and bring your authentic self to your page and feel good about it, okay? That would be my advice. <laughs> okay, moving on. So the professional summary. So this is mine. Um, and I, I don't think mine's the best, okay? That's not why I have it. I have it here because I know what mine is. Um, but again, you can see that I, I put some passionate stuff in there, right? Like, um, and I also added a couple of one, two, three, six bullets um, under some of the things that, um, that I, I consider myself to be, um, you know, at the expert level in or something that I'm really skilled in. So my summary is very clean, again, very easy to read, showcases who I am, not only as a professional, but as a human. Um, and I think the world as we know it is changing, like, the evolution of bringing your authentic self is so important. So more and more, we are seeing this showcased through LinkedIn profiles. Digital interviewing, don't worry, I know we have four minutes, two slides, we're good to go, okay? So don't be afraid to ask for accommodation. So we touched this, we talked about it. Like every single email that I send out to talent that I'm connecting with has an accommodation section in my signature, okay? So my objective is I hope, I like hope that someone feels comfortable enough to say, you know what, Don, thank you so much. I do require an accommodation. What does that look like? And how can we make that work? So if you do need one, um, ask, I mean, most companies, one good thing about the state of the world right now is people are talking, the world is awakening um, and it's so powerful and it's so wonderful. So if you need an accommodation, ask, okay? I'd rather you ask, bring your best self if needed um, versus not feeling 100% comfortable, okay? And noise pets children, like my goodness, I have all of those things and there is chaos in my house. And oftentimes I'm the one doing the interviews and that's happening in my household. So if you have that in yours, don't sweat it. Like seriously, this is so normal right now, okay? And have your resume printed on a screen, however it is that you are gonna need to, to feel prepared have questions written down or ready to go in your mind, whatever that means for you. And yes, I know I talked about, um, you know, having a very casual LinkedIn, if you feel so feel comfortable, but for the interview, I mean, definitely um, treat it as if it was an interview. Um, you know, I've had people come online um, and, and I don't wanna say dress up because don't, but treat it as if you were going to an interview in person, right? I know it's, the concept is different. You're at your home, you're at your kitchen table, you're at your living room table, whatever that means, um, but still treat it as if you're going to an interview, right? And then again, I'm big on authentic, uh, bringing your authentic self. So bring your authentic self because um, that's where you'll feel the most confident, okay? So that is it, everybody. Um, I hope you, I know I talked a lot and um, I hope you stayed with me through this journey over the last hour, but um, if there's any additional questions, like we, we can stay on for about five, 10 minutes if needed, but I am still here if you want to ask some questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the recording so that if people, um, you know, want to ask questions, they can. Thank you so much, Dawn. That was amazing. And we will be posting this to YouTube. Okay, wonderful.